Pop Up Flamby's Life and Calendar. Video. It's once again time for Papa Flemish Advent Calendar and today a little integrator from 0 to 1 of x to the 6 ninth power minus 1 divided by the natural log of x. Give it a shot and post your solution down there below if you can come up with one. This right here is a little fucking bitch. And if you don't go about it with the right technique it's gonna turn into a holy mess. But I'm here for you today to show you how to solve this right here. By the way, if you want to support the 24 videos on the Edwin calendar a tiny little bit, then make sure to make use of the code <laughs> to get 15% over on everything on my spring shop or alternatively also 10% over on stemwitch.com on everything. So definitely make sure to support the channel this way. And now we are going to dive right in. Now, as mentioned before, if you use regular techniques, you are not going to arrive at anything. If you do integration by parts, you have the trouble of integrating or differentiating one over the natural log of x. It's going to turn into an absolute bloody mess. If you introduce a substitution, for example, substitute x to 6 ninth power minus 1 for t, then if you differentiate this implicitly, you are going to end up with a factor of x to the 68th power, giving you something like the 69th root of 68 or whatever. It's not nice but if you are in a pinch there's always one method that you can try it out and see if the mvp of all integration techniques works for you and this is the leibniz rule for integration aka Feynman's technique what you want to do with the leibniz rule for integration is we want to introduce a certain parameter inside of this integral parameterize this integral i'm going to call the original one i differentiated and basically solve a differential equation, giving you the right value at the very last, hopefully. And this is a matter of trial and error. If you want to make use of Leibniz rule for integration, you just gonna slam t's in here and see if it does fit in some kind of way after differentiating. And I for myself used it here by introducing the parameter t out of the real numbers or greater than zero, really depends on what you want to use it for. Um, as being the exponent of our x, namely, I'm gonna introduce the new integra i with respect of uh, with respect to t as being the integral from zero to one of x to the t of power minus one divided by the natural log of x integrate with respect to x. And as mentioned before, we wanna differentiate this whole inside of the integral and see what we get. Why does this certain parameterization make sense? Where we have x to the t of power and we are going to differentiate not with respect to x, but with respect to t overall. Meaning what we are gonna get is, since this right here is an exponential function of sorts, we are gonna get a factor of the natural log of x. And maybe it does cancel out with the one down here below together to get us a nicer result or an easier integration. Spoiler alert, it obviously does. I wouldn't introduce it if it wouldn't do anything nice. Now, I want you guys to notice one last thing, namely at the very end, we want to go back to our original integral i. And I want you guys to notice the, sim the similarities. If we set t to be equal to 69, we are going to be left with the original integral. So our integral i is the same as i, with respect to 69, t being equal to 69 plugged in. And now we are going to go ahead and differentiate this whole integral and see what we are going to get. Namely, we are going to differentiate i with respect to t. And now we are going to get the differential of the whole integral. But with the Leibniz rule for integration, if certain conditions are met, for example, the monotone or um, or the dominated convergence theorem hold, we can switch the integral operator and the differential operator without any restrictions because it would just take too long to prove in the video. I'm too lazy to do that, obviously. We are just going to switch those with any restriction, leaving us with the integral from zero to one of the differential with respect to t of x to the t of power minus one divided by the natural log of x. Integrate with respect to x. And now it's just simple differentiating in here with respect to t. Don't forget that 1 over log of x is a constant with respect to t, so we can track it to the front, leaving us just with the differential of x to the t of power minus 1. I want you guys to remember, as mentioned before, x to the t of power with respect to t is an exponential function. This thing right here is the same as, and this is a very old trick, which makes it easier to differentiate exponential functions of uh, various bases. This is the same as e to the natural log of x to the t of power, we can bring the t to the front, giving us e to the t times the natural log of x. 
And now we can differentiate this, leaving us with the integral from zero to one of one over log of x was just constant as mentioned before. Now negative one is gonna vanish in the process when we differentiate with respect to t. And if we differentiate the exponential function with respect to t, the exponential function, which is x to the t power, is going to be preserved in some kind of way. And the inner derivative is just t times log of x, differentiate with respect to t, is going to give us the log of x. And here is where the magic is going to happen. Namely, log of x and 1 over log of x is going to cancel out in the process. And all we have to do is now integrate x to the t power with respect to x. And this is very nice because it's, this is just a polynomial of degree t that we are going to integrate, which we all know how to do. Namely, this is going to result in x to the t plus 1 power divided by t plus 1, evaluated from 0 to 1. And yeah, now we can just plug everything in. If we plug 0 in, it's going to die in a corner in Mexico. It's just 0. And if we plug 1 in, 1 to the t plus 1 power, is the same as 1, giving us the final value of i prime t being equal to um, just 1 over t plus 1. And how can we now get to back to our original i of t, which is what we want, because we want to plug our initial value somehow in. We are just going to integrate this one right here with respect to t, and this is very easy. Oh, integrals fall apart so nicely using this technique. Um, okay, now we are going to integrate this one with respect to t. Um, but now we need upper and lower bounds. You can not do that and just solve the differential equation regularly, solving for c, for example, but we can already plug initial values in. Namely, what we are going to get out by the fundamental theorem of calculus is just i um, with t evaluated at the upper bound, so b. Um, minus i evaluated at the uh, lower bound. Okay, so the upper bound, for example, we could set to be equal to 69. That's the standard approach here, because then we would get the original value of our integral i out that we are looking for. So i of 69 is going to be here. Now, for the next one, we can plug any old value for t in and see what is going to happen. Now, one cool approach here is to plug something into our t, which is going to make the whole integral vanish. If we could just make this whole thing zero, then the definite integral over zero is just going to be zero overall. When is this going to happen? If we plug in t being equal to zero, because then we are going to get x to the zero of power, which is one, minus one is going to be zero, zero over the log of x is going to vanish um, and die somewhere in Mexico too. So if we use the lower bound as being zero, then i of zero is going to be the same as zero and it's going to vanish. And yeah, now we are going to apply the same integral with the same upper and lower bound to the left hand side from 0 to 69, which is a very nice upper bound, if you ask me, of dt divided by t plus 1. And yeah, you can introduce, introduce substitution, let t plus 1 be equal to x, then you are going to get that dx is equal to dt. And this is just going to be the natural log of x overall, but x is the same as t plus 1. So this integral evaluates to the natural log of t plus 1 overall um, from 0 to 69. And if we plug 0 into here, we are going to get the natural log of 1, <laughs> which is just 0. Very nice. So overall, the value of our integral i69, which is the original integral x to 6 to power minus 1 divided by the log of x, is going to evaluate to the natural log of 69 plus 1 or 70. Or if you want to be a bit cooler, you are going to say that the value of i is going to be the logarithm of the successor of 69, which is looking even cooler and it preserves our notion of 69 being the nicest of all numbers. And I thank you guys for watching and I hope you were able to figure out the value of this integral too. And it just takes one blackboard to do a lot of math magic. <laughs> I really hope you did enjoy today's episode of the Advent Calendar and stay tuned for more. As mentioned before, don't forget to check out my spring shop or stemmage.com for the nice discount and also NP Cooking, my NPC channel where I'm posting also Advent Calendar videos too. That's it from me for today and I wish you guys a flammable day. See ya!